The market shrugs off the Fed minutes as it waits for CPI data. This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so the market traded in a pretty tight range today as we awaited the Fed minutes, and then even after the Fed minutes came out, nothing really happened. It was a pretty boring day in the market, and it really shows that the market is more concerned about the inflation number tomorrow than recapping old people talking about inflation. So what we're going to do today is zoom in and look at the possible paths after the CPI data comes out. I'll get into all that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, real quick before we jump into the chart, even though today was a boring day, PT being the master trader that he is, traded iron condors all day and made money for his people. So even on bad days, PT's killing it. All right, guys, let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart, and I'm going to try something new today because I always want these videos to be better for you guys so that you can understand them better and see them better and all those types of things. One of the people who view this channel gave me some feedback about how to outline the paths, so I'm going to try using the arrow tool today to see if that helps you guys. And if you'll leave some feedback in the comments if you want me to keep doing that or not, I would really appreciate it, okay? So here we are on the one-hour futures chart, and we're going to outline the two paths. As you can see, we had a nothing burger of a day today. It just chopped sideways all day even when the minutes came out. So we're outlining two potential paths uh, that we'll see tomorrow when CPI comes out. The first one, okay, and this one, I'm kind of in between where we're at as a primary. I'm kind of 50-50 on this. And the reason is, okay, the, the move up off of this low, we made a low and bounced, okay? And then they came back down aggressively, like they were going to take out the low, and then they failed, and then they failed, and then they failed, and then they failed, and they haven't been able to break this low, which tells me two things. One, it's a pretty important number for the bulls, and two, if it does break, we're likely to see some pretty quick selling after that. So uh, this is a key number to keep an eye on, this low, but I'm in between which two paths because you have two outcomes here. One is the bulls can, or the bears can break down directly, all right? And then, as I said, being as important as this is, as they're trying to defend it, that tells me that there's a lot of selling underneath it, Okay. But the other thing is when you get a whole bunch of failures, you can get a very strong reversal up out of here, all right? And that could be the other path. So let's go to, through the two paths here. One is that this is the bottom, and then we got an A wave up, a B wave down here, and then we'd be looking for a C wave up, which is a five wave move, okay? So you'd be looking for a C wave up to complete right here where this A wave is. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, You'll know I did a big picture overview of where I think the market's going over the next several years, and this A wave leads to a bigger move up towards about 4,200 and then a correction after that. But for now, we're going to just cover this part of the move in the market. So that's our first potential path in wave A. Okay. The second potential path is that we've topped in four. All right, and we're making wave five down. Now, if you've followed this channel for any amount of time, you know that I am tracking this down move as a diagonal. And so what that means is each of the waves are going to be three wave structures instead of five wave structures. All right. So wave five would track as an A, B, okay, and then you'd see a C wave down after that. And that's also a five wave structure because C waves are five wave structures. Okay. So those are the two paths we're tracking. You're looking at the A, B, C path higher for A. And then the A, B, and then C wave down in five. So it is possible that overnight we get a push up in the B wave and then CPI sells down. It is possible that we get a push up in the B wave, get a little spike down, and then do the C wave up. So again, I'm 50-50 on this because of how well they've held this line right here. But again, if, if they break the low, expect heavy selling to the downside. And if they don't break the low, I'm looking for a move up towards 4,200. Uh, in that area, possibly a little higher than that to challenge the August highs and then a C wave down from there. So this is what we're tracking on the S&P 500 over on the NASDAQ. OK, some slightly different counts over here because the NASDAQ has broken this low. All right. And so it is possible that we see an A, B, C up from here to give us that A wave. And then we look for a B wave pullback and then C higher from there. We're also tracking a move lower where we'd get a bounce up in four and then a move down in five toward the 10,000, 10,500 region to complete this wave five and then look for that ABC higher that we're looking for. 
Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link, and it will take you right over to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there and make sure you love it, make sure it's for you, and that you become part of our trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. All right, in our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, as well as all of your Elliott Wave questions answered. We swing trade, okay, which means that our trades can last anywhere from a few days to a few months, so we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are looking for day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's throne room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, day trading, and PT's reduced risk binary method that just crushes the market. He gets you in at a small price and he gets you big multiples on your money and it's based on how he structures the trade, which is very unique. It's something you kind of have to see to understand and that's why you get that seven day free trial to make sure it's for you again before you spend your money. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account averaging three to 4% gains per week. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can make some money together. All right, key takeaways for today following two basic paths here. We're following an ABC higher, okay, where the C wave would take us up here to the 3875 area. And then we would look for a B wave pullback and then C higher, but this will be the short term move that we're looking for. Or we're following a spike up and then a move down in C to complete this wave five in the 3250 to 3450 area on the S&P. Over on the NASDAQ, we are looking for a bounce in an ABC higher, okay, that can take us up to the 11800 region. If we don't get that, we're looking for a smaller bounce and then a sell-off down into the 10,000, 10,500 region to complete this wave five. Guys, that is the market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.